everyone and uh, welcome to another story time with Aunt Sarah Bell. I hope wherever today's story finds you is a good place. I have another humorous story. I don't know if you are getting a theme but I like a good story that will make me smile or laugh. Today we have the book Moustache by Margie Palatin and it's illustrated by Henry Cole. It's a about a moose who um, has a very unruly mustache, which is why it's called Moose Stash. I enjoy a book to lighten my spirits, and I hope you do too. So you know what to do. Find a place that you like to sit to read a story. Maybe you like to lay down. Find something or someone to enjoy the story with and get ready for Moustache. Oh my goodness, there's some clippers. Clippers are used usually by barbers, but sometimes hairdressers to trim hair really short. Let's see if this has to do with our story. Are you ready? Me too. Oh, there's a brush a comb and a pair of scissors and they look like there's n they're no match for this hair. Moose had a problem, a horrible hairy prickly problem, and it grew right below his nostrils, those are the holes in your nose, and just above his upper lip. A moustache! Look at how long that moustache is. Now, not a few spare hairs and not shy little stubble, no mere weak wandering whiskers on the upper lip of this moose. No siree, moose had a big, bushy, bristly, mighty moustache. But a moustache that was burly, sir, was a burly, surly, mangly mess and it itched a lot. Sure he plucked and he tweezed, he even clipped, snipped and teased but his combs were still cowards and his brushes rebelled. His scissors sip, simply surrendered. Look, it's waving a white flag. Typically that happens if someone's like, I don't wanna fight anymore. You may see it in like movies or video games too. So they're all giving up hope trying to tame this mustache. Moose was in a frizzy tizzy. The moustache was completely Crimping his style. He was a great hoofer, but he could barely bop and hip hop with his moustache going flip flop, so he couldn't dance to his music because it was getting in his way. He was a wonderful chef. He could, but he simply could not flambe his souffle with all those whiskers in his way. And he was a daring skier. But how could he downhill race with a mighty moustache blowing in his face? Moose had to do something, and soon. But what? After days and days of much serious thought, Moose got an idea. He crossed some hair here, he crossed some hair there, and he tied his moustache around his neck. A moose scarf seemed to be the ideal answer to his problem. It was so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect. But then his moustache got knotted and mangled and horribly tangled. And those hundreds of hairs still prickled and tickled. Worse, Moose could barely take a breath with all that moustache wrapped around his neck. So Moose untied, unwrapped, unknotted, and ah, gulped in some fresh air. Look, he's a fan. He's fanning his face because he was so hot and out of air. He got another idea. He parted some hair this way. He parted some hair that way, and he heaped all that moustache on top of his head. Moustachioed antlers seemed to be this ideal answer to his problem. It was so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect. Until a squadron of squirrels and one very nosy gopher moved right into the moose motel. They huddled and hoarded, furrowed in and burrowed out. Needless to say, 
It became quite crowded up there on Moose's head and heavy and messy. And very, very noisy. The squirrely chitting and chatting squeaks and squawks woke Mo Moose every morning before the crack of dawn. And that gopher was giving the moose one hairy headache. Moose needed his sleep. He needed his rest. He needed his privacy. Oh, he can't even take a shower without them being there. Moose dashed you antlers. Nuts, said Moose. So he unparted, unpiled, untwisted, and untwined and said adios to those hairy horns. But now what, 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 what? The miserable moose took a hold of a hunk of hair and wrestled it, then roped it and tethered it, tied and tamed. Aha, a moose tail. That was so simple. That was so perfectly, that was so easy that it was not so perfectly perfect. <laughs> it's right in the middle of his face. Talk about a dizzy do. Moose didn't know if he was coming or going, backwards, forwards, this way, that. He didn't know which end was which. Moose had to bail on the tail. See, he can't even see. And so he thought and he thought and he thought some more. No other idea was a worthy winter, winner. Braids were a bother. A moustache sweater was too sweltering. Ooh, that would be hot. Net, not. So he tried netting them and tying them up to his antlers. Net, not. Poor Moose, his problem was truly terrible, unbearable, just downright sad. He felt so alone, he didn't know what else to do. Then, call it fate, call it destin destiny, it was probably just dumb luck. But one day, Moose tripped on his moustache and had no time to duck. Oof, pardon me, pardon me, they both said as they bumped. Then they blinked. Then they stared, and their hearts went the thump. She was a moose with a bouffant so bodacious, outrageous, well, it was just plain old big. Hair after hair piled higher than high, a skyscape scraping dew of glorious curls, a towering of swirls, twist and twirls. She was simply splendid, stupendous, absolutely superb. Look at that. Bumped into each other. Of course, Moose had to ask how she did what she did to get such a do. Mrs. Miss Moose winked and whispered, just a little glue. So she helped. He fearlessly plunged a hoof into a fat pot of white gooey goop. And carefully, oh so carefully, they glopped and they plopped. They pasted and pressed. They coaxed and curled every truly unruly wayward whisker. Around and around they tweaked and twirled those horrible hairs until Moose's once mangly mess was now a wondrous winding waves of marvelous moustache. Moose gazed into the mirror and smiled a broad moosey smile. He was so happy, so glad, just giddy with glee. He looked dashing and handsome. Moose gushed, is that really me? Look there lopping on that glue. Her hair is really pretty in that bouffant hairdo. With not a care for one hair, moose, the moose pair boogied and bopped. They skied downhill, even uphill, and their cooking was hot, hot, hot. Using hot mustard and chocolate moose mix and some carrots and an onion. So, of course, it wasn't long after that Moose and his Moose stash and his beautiful bride fox trotted and tangoed and walked down the aisle. Good hair days, bad hair days, they vowed to love and to cherish. With hearts heaped with love and pots filled with goop, they both sighed, I do glue and promised to never to part. Look at them, they're dancing, they're getting married. It was so simple, so easy, so perfectly perfect and it stuck. And look, those are like family pictures. You can see them on at Niagara Falls. And oh, there's a little moose. A little moose in a swimming pool and then the three of them. And that's the end of Moose Dash. Isn't it so great? 
I hope you enjoyed it and all the verbal twists and turns that I had to say to try and read all the words. Well, until next time, see you again.